Hello, I'm Phil Planamira, and I'm with FireEye's Mandiant Consulting Team. Today, I'm going to show you the basic features of FireEye's Threat Analytics Platform, or TAP. Now, I'm logged into TAP here, and you can see the dashboard, where we get a quick glance of TAP statistics on alerts and incidents. Below that is information on the incoming data sources. You can view trends on the incoming data by selecting Dashboards and clicking Trends. I'll return now to the Summary Dashboard and follow this link to open all the alerts from TAP. Now these alerts fire based on FireEye Threat Intelligence, well over 1,500 rules created by FireEye, or rules that you create. So let's open one. We can see in the description that this is a hit on FireEye intelligence. The distinguisher is a domain name, an indicator from FireEye's threat intelligence database. On these types of alerts in TAP, we can gain instant context by clicking the Intel tab. So let's learn a little bit more about that domain. We see this domain is associated with a APT group, APT1, and it's annotated as evil. If I want to read more about this APT group, I can pivot right into the FireEye Intel Center by clicking the APT1 link and opening the APT1 Threat Group Profile. I can go from there to a deep dive into the Threat Group, download indicators of compromise, and conduct other activities in the FireEye Intelligence Center. Back in the alert, I can pivot right from the contained events to learn more including which of my hosts are the ones communicating with this potentially malicious domain in some way. From this search, I can view the results in many different ways. I can view in this default list view, and I can modify that list view to show the raw data as it came in from syslog, as well as the clean data, or just the data as it came in from syslog. We can sort the data, and we can also view geo-decoration data. This is data that is applied to every IP as TAP digests it. And finally, I can display more records per page. If this view is not ideal, I can turn on the table layout and view the data in an easy table. I can customize the fields in that table and save those layouts for later. So I'll add destination country code and destination ISP. These come from the geo decoration on each IP. And you can see that those are added to my table. I can export the data that I am viewing up to a thousand rows to CSV if I need to do that for some reason. I can also export just the group by data. So for instance, if I have a more complicated uh, group by statement here, so here I'm just grouping by the five tuple, I can export just that data by clicking this button right here. And here I'll have the five tuple and their counts from this particular search. If I'd like to view that as a table, I can click that button and view just the group by data as a table. In the tables, I can pivot to other searches quite easily. You can see if I click this button, select new search, all of the fields in that group by row appear in my search. In the events below, I can pivot to individual elements and do more research that way. TAP is a very robust alerting and investigation system, but understanding the easy search syntax can enable proactive hunting in ways which were previously much more difficult and time-consuming. For that search syntax, you can click this link in the top right, Syntax Help. This brings you right to the reference pages on the query language used here, as well as all the other help topics. TAP also has an incident framework whereby you can add events to an incident and assign it for action. So revisiting alerts for a moment, 
and clicking on any one alert. I can add all of the events in this alert container to an incident. So you can see here there are four, uh, four events in this alert. I can add those to an incident by selecting Investigate in the top right and Add to Incident. And now you can see my incident is open with four events added to it. I can edit this incident and assign it to any user that has access to this tap instance. I'll just assign it to myself. And you can see in the revisions an audit trail of all the activities on that incident up until revision 2 where I assigned it to myself. I can also add notes to the incident and track those notes as I go. I can export all the incident items within this incident as CSV or JSON if I'd like to do that. From within the incident, I can pivot just like I can in an alert. I can then take any of these events as I can from any event from any search and then select all of them or just some of them and then add them to the incident as well. And you can see when I return to the incident that now my events have gone from 4 to over 100. Moving on to the elements of detection. TAP has three pillars of detection, indicators or threat intelligence, rules, and analytics. Now TAP matches data sent to it against millions of indicators from our world-class FireEye intelligence. More indicators can be added through the custom indicators capability. And you can do so manually or by importing a CSV. And this is also accessible via the TAP API. When a match is found on any indicator, any threat intelligence indicator, including the custom indicators, TAP generates a synthetic event with the class Intel underscore hit. Now FireEye provides several TAP rules for detecting this type of activity. And I'll show you those types of rules here. Here's an example of one. You can also see there are hundreds of other different types of FireEye rules across a broad variety of categories, from windows to industrial control systems to point of sale. And here you can see the windows rules, for example, and an example windows rule. The third pillar of detection is analytics, where TAP examines all the data in your TAP instance, looking for evidence of beacon activity, unusual application activity, even geofeasibility of logins. Like Intel matches, the analytics engine will produce synthetic events. It'll produce those with the class analytics. You can use that class to produce alerts like we've discussed, by creating a rule. So let's say I want to create a rule to uh, produce an alert every time the DNS fast flux detector detects an anomaly. So I can run that search and then save it as a rule. You can always view analytics advisories here under insights advisories. You can see an example here of beacon detections in this particular demonstration environment. The final component that I'd like to show you is custom dashboards. You can see here I've created a dashboard called Downloads, which shows the different types of files being downloaded via HTTP over the last week. Now the hits here rely on data from bro sensors, but you can see, at least at a glance, which 7Z and RAR archives have been downloaded over the course of the week via HTTP, as well as DOS executables that have been downloaded over the course of the last week. 
and you can see here that at least one of these events probably bears further investigation. That concludes our time together today discussing some of TAP's basic features. Again, my name is Phil Planamira, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you.